Thanks, Amy, and it's great to be back here at another LISA. So my talk today is about porting a lot of the tools I've created in the past that use Dtrace to Linux. Now that I've moved to Netflix, uh, I'm now doing a lot of performance work primarily on Linux and miss some of my tools. So Netflix, we have a massive Amazon EC2 Linux cloud, tens of thousands of instances, and performance is critical. We actually also have a lot of free BSD on dedicated hardware boxes, that's our CDN. I'm Brendan Gregg, I was just introduced, and uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the Linux performance work I've been doing this year. So I'll go through four parts. I'll go through some one-liners to cut to the chase so that you can see uh, the new performance tools I'm, I want to talk about, uh, do background to understand how we got there, the te underlying technology for these tools, and then some tools themselves. So to start with, some one-liners. Uh, this is the, I think it's the perfect crowd to be showing you some, some Unix-style one-liners and how they work to, as a way to describe and explain technology. This one-liner, uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm running a one-liner called, uh, a program called T-Point for TracePoint, and I'm instrumenting one of the Linux standard trace points. So this is block RQ insert. And I hit enter and it will immediately start giving me output. In fact, I've set it up so that I can do this live, because that'll be much more exciting. I might need to make that just a little bit bigger now that I've logged in. Okay. So I just have a, uh, a virtual box where I'm, I'm doing a little bit of uh, workload here. So doing issue or insert. Okay, so this one liner, I, I hit enter, I immediately start doing some instrumentation. I control C, it's done. I can, uh, I can pipe it into head if I want. So there's the, the top 20 lines. Uh, I've used T point minus capital H, and so it's decorated the columns with some information there. Uh, T point itself has a usage message, uh, like all good Unix style tools. So I've got options, I can set a duration, I can trace just a particular process ID. I can list out all the trace points available, so T point minus L. Let's look for the block trace points. So there they all are. I've got syscall sys trace points as well. Uh, let me just list them all out. And there's trace points for Zen, VM scan into the kernel. There's XC4s in there as well, and so on. What, th this is kernel static tracing. And so these are markers that have been placed throughout the kernel so that we can quickly get some instrumentation and see what's going on on the inside. So that's running T-Point. And I've just decorated some of the columns there so you can see what they are. T-Point minus L I demonstrated. So on, on uh, one of the production servers I was running this on, I had uh, 1,200 static trace points in the kernel to show what's going on. Uh, T-Point minus H, which I showed you, that's the usage message. Some T-Point one liners. So listing trace points, T point minus L, showing usage messages. This has, by design, the look and feel of a standard Unix tool. So options to do various things. I can also get into some advanced things. So, so the second bottom one, uh, I can do T point minus S to do stack backtraces, which is fantastic. So if I'm, if I'm doing my, say, block, let's do insert. So block RQ in insert is when I'm putting a new disk I.O. into the queue to be scheduled to disks. If I do minus S at the end, and of course I can pipe that into head, it's following up the, so there's my probe fired, block RQ insert. So it gives me various, this is by a K worker, gives me various details. Here's a kernel stack trace, so I can see exactly how I got there. So in each of these points here, I can then use dynamic tracing to get more information on. If I want to understand ext4 write pages, I can then go and use another one-liner, and maybe I'll, I'll just count it. What was it write pages? Let's just count the rate that that's firing. So tracing ext4 write pages, that's happening uh, only eight times a second. That's, that's not as exciting as I thought. How about all ext4 commands that start with the W? Nope, nope. How about all ext4? Oh, that's better. <laughs> There's way too many. So. I have a, a, a set of these uh, small tools that allow you to get into Linux uh, tracing information. And so I just showed another one that was func count and t-point. And they all behave the same way. They're very simple to use. 
One-liners are great because they are useful. So if I showed you a, a series of one-liners, which I will in this talk, you can uh, copy them, you can, you can make your own cheat sheet of one-liners and then paste them as you need to when you're getting into disk I.O. analysis or networking analysis or whatever. They're instructive, and so one-liners teach tool usage by example. Uh, and they can also show what use cases are most useful. So if I gave you a set of, uh, I said earlier there was 1,200 uh, trace points inside the kernel, and of course you can use them in, com in combination with different filters and stack traces. If I gave you a set of 20, one 20 trace points and one-liners and said, this is, this is a really useful set, what I've done is I've selected from all of those available using my expertise to help you get the most value. So it's not, when I say instructive, it's not just one line is help you understand how to use a tool. It can also help convey expertise by narrowing down all of the different things that can be done with these tools and showing you these are the ones that I think are really useful. Intuitive. And so the one, the one line is in T point that I was just using follows uh, Unix, POSIX, IEEE standards. Uh, so you've got get ops, you've got minus H for help. When you hit enter, it runs, control C to end. Uh, and one liners can also be competitive. They can show why, why would I use this tool instead of some other tool? And so you can come up with a list of one liners to convey the meaning. I've been doing this for a long time. And so uh, a, a very long time ago, I came up with a list of D-trace one liners. And uh, someone copied and pasted a set of them onto Wikipedia as a way to demonstrate the, the value of D-trace. And it's the same. It's the same reasons I just said. It's, these are useful, which is why I wrote them for D-Trace. They're instructive, and so you can see the power, the expressive power of D-Trace from very short programs. And also helps show that uh, it's intuitive. So I've got some printf statements. It, that looks pretty straightforward. I, I'm sure I could go and edit that and tweak that. Uh, just to, to show, to, to help you pick up the usage yourself. These D-Trace one-liners that I came up Along, I've got a list of like 20 of them, and um, they just picked six. These were also competitive. And so when I wrote these back in 2005, Linux couldn't do these. And so that, that actually made them uh, uh, quite useful examples, and people used them all the time when they, they, they were, uh, we were uh, competing with Linux and showing the value of D-Trace. So useful, instructive, intuitive, and also competitive as well. I've ported them to Linux. And so now I can run these tools, and yeah, they're a little bit hacky, and, and sometimes it doesn't quite work. I might have to tweak funk count, what it's instrumenting for the kernel version. But nowadays, in 2014, that set of uh, one-liners for, for D-Trace, I can basically do uh, using just a set of extra tools that I've written. Now, what's interesting about these is these tools, so T-Point and funk count and uh, some of the other ones, like execsnoop, opensnoop, syscount, this is not, these aren't using some new kernel module that I've written, that you need to go out and download Brendan's kernel module and add it to your systems. And now you get to have some of the power of D-Trace, not all of it, but some of it, so you can solve some issues. Actually, I'm using existing functionality that's been in Linux for many, many years. So I'm using F-Trace. And F-Trace was added to Linux 2.6.27 uh, many years ago. And it, F, F-Trace is is pretty useful. It has not had uh, great, uh, it has not had any marketing and has not had front ends that people have picked up. And so, new tools for old Linux secrets, it's, it, it's at the point where F-Trace is almost a secret of the Linux kernel that very few people know about. Uh, and so coming up with a set of tools, just simple front ends to the existing kernel functionality really helps market the value. And it, it gives you, it, it's the same thing, it gives you things that are useful, instructive, intuitive, and competitive. So that was just a crash course straight into the sort of things we can do. Some background for this. So Linux tracing is uh, many things. So there's ftrace, perf events, which is the perf command, ebpf, which is being merged slowly right now, system tap, ktap, and so on and so on. Understanding all of these is pretty time consuming and complex. Uh, and it, it, it's something that I've invested a lot of hours and, and years into. This may be best told and explained through a personal experience. So I became a systems performance expert uh, to the point where I understood tools, metrics, I understood the art of inference uh, and interpretation of what the operating system would give you. And this is prior to dynamic tracing. When D-Trace came out, that was, that was fantastic. 
I could now go and solve a set of issues that previously I couldn't. Um, it also made some things that I could do previously much easier to do. Uh, and also I helped Sun compete with Linux because I was able to use Dtrace in all sorts of useful ways that Linux couldn't do. I began analyzing Linux performance seriously in about 2011 and I tried SystemTap, the Dtrace for Linux port, KTAP, and with quite limited success, much pain, much confusion, uh, really, really rough edges. Um, this year I switched to Linux when I came to Netflix and I expected it to be pretty hard, but I was excited to take it on and, and uh, put in the effort to port my tools over so that I could do uh, Linux performance. Early on when I joined Netflix, I had a disk I.O. issue and the engineer came to me and said, Brennan, if you want to go use your tools on this disk I.O. issue on an instance, by the way, you've only got five minutes because I'm going to migrate the load off because I don't want it. Uh, I don't want the, the customer to be suffering, even, even though the environment is fairly fault tolerant. So you've got five minutes to look at it. So I jump into the system and perf events is not installed, so I don't have a perf command. Um, system tap is there, but it's a really ancient version that I don't dare run. Uh, and I have no other tracer. So I collected IOSTAT and SAR, but I, I really needed a trace of the event by event because I suspected that there was latency outliers. I wanted a trace of the disk I.O. issues so that I could plot them uh, because I suspected there was a, uh, a batch of writes may have been uh, causing reads to, to back behind it or something like that. If I get a trace, a, a nice clean trace of all the disk I.O. events, I'm sure I can figure it out. Block trace was not installed. Basically nothing was installed. The system was too slow to actually add anything. So doing like an apt get, add this thing, uh, it uh, wasn't going to work. And I asked the engineers, like, can I just have more time? I, I need like half an hour so that I can set things up, get system tap running. And it's like, no, you don't have half an hour. Like, that's it, the load's gone. So I was furious. I was furious at Linux. I was furious at myself for letting this one get away. It's a disk I.O. issue. I've done these all the time. I'm really good at these. And yet, because I didn't have the Linux tools, I, was, uh, I, I couldn't solve what should have been a really easy one. But I noticed the system did have this thing called ftrace. And I hadn't really used ftrace before. ftrace is the weird stuff under slash sys that you can echo one to various files and turn on tracing and then echo zero to turn it off. Has anyone used ftrace previously in the room? Wow, there's more hand, hands than I've seen anywhere. So we've got like eight people have used ftrace. Ftrace is actually pretty cool. It's part of the Linux kernel. And as I discovered, Ftrace was available on all of the Netflix instances. And so I could have been using it. I just didn't have the tools built on top of it. I didn't have the experience with it. And so why am I not using Ftrace already? And why is no one apparently using Ftrace already? I, tr I tried to talk to a lot of other people. No one had really heard of it. And so I refocused my effort on what Linux has already in the tree, things that are maintained. Ftrace and perf events are both part of the Linux source. Um, they seem to be pretty well kept secrets. There's no marketing efforts like there have been for, say, Dtrace, uh, and there absolutely hasn't been for Ftrace at all. For me, that really helped clear up some confusion and pain because now when I do tracing on Linux, I can use Ftrace and perf events, which are, which are fairly reliable. Uh, they're in tree, they, they're maintained. And then when I need to do something more exotic, I can go and have a look at, say, System Tap or KTAP. And so that, that actually had better return of investment when I was uh, putting engineering time into solving problems. So many of our tracing needs can now be met. And so like those one liners I wrote for Dtrace in 2005, which, which Linux couldn't really do, now a lot of them you can do. You, you can actually do a fair amount on Linux. Uh, when, when you actually get up to speed with ftrace and perf events. There are some things that, that are still really difficult, like doing custom in-kernel aggregations, but there's many things that can be done. To give you the background of this, a tracing uh, timeline, uh, in the 1990s, it's static traces, prototype dynamic traces. Uh, by 2004, Linux had k-probes, so it could do dynamic kernel tracing, but the interface was really difficult, and it didn't catch on. 2005 was Slaris Dtrace, which is fantastic. Static and dynamic tracing, user and kernel level, production ready, which is really important, and an easy to use interface, and it was marketed. Some told everyone about how awesome Dtrace was. But since then, Linux Ftrace 2008, Linux Perf 2009, Linux Trace Points, and then many Ftrace and Perf events enhancements have happened over the past five years. 
And now the latest one that is being added is eBPF, which allows us to do the custom in kernel aggregations. And it's actually jitted instrumentation, so it's pretty fast. So that's the background of how we got to today. So we actually do have some things that we didn't used to, ha used to have. The technology for this, so Linux provides three tracing sources, trace points, K probes, and U probes. And I can uh, illustrate trace points like this. There are various groups of trace points, like ext4, syscalls. These are static. Uh, uh, this, is, this is static tracing. So it means there are co code macros put into the kernel source code that implement this. Um, they will provide key event details as a format string, which I'll explain in a moment. And then there's probes, dynamic tracing. And so U probes for user space and K probes for the kernel. And these, for, the, for K probes, we can look at function calls, function returns, and line numbers. It's really great. It fills in the gaps that static tracing doesn't provide. I try not to use these first because dynamic tracing is an unstable interface, which is inherent you know, because you're instrumenting the raw source code. But uh, it's great for when you need it. So if a static trace point doesn't do what I need, I can then go and use a dynamic trace point to solve that problem. So that's the instrumentation. And then there's traces built on top of the instrumentation. In tree, we have ftrace and perf events, and eBPF is coming soon. And then out of tree, we have many others. Ftrace, which I mentioned, you know, why was I not using ftrace earlier, is a collection of, there's the ftrace uh, pony mascot, since dtrace has a pony mascot as well, ftrace has one now. A collection of tracing capabilities, uh, tracing counting, uh, graphing, so you can do latency analysis. And um, it's not programmable yet. So it does many cool things, but I can't do a very custom uh, program in kernel like I could with dtrace. It's, uh, you use it out of slash sys or a front end tool. It was added by Stephen Rostat. Stephen works on the real time kernel, and out of necessity, he had a whole heap of issues to work on and has built ftrace added feature by feature by feature as he's debugged live problems. And so some of the best tools are built out of necessity, and this is a, this is a, a case of that. To give you an idea of the ftrace interface, so here's static tracing of, say, block R, RQ insert trace point. CD into syskernel, echo one into uh, a, a file which will enable that trace point. There's a couple of uh, interfaces, so I can cat trace pipe which will synchronously block and will give me the output uh, as the events arrive. I can also cat just trace, which will do buffered output as well. And I can create, I can create snapshots and I can create separate buffers. Ftrace has a whole heap of stuff it can do. Uh, and then I need to turn it off. Dynamic tracing, a few more steps. And so uh, I'm setting an Ftrace filter and then setting the current tracer to be function. Then I can cat my trace pipe. Then I need to reset the state. Um, and there are different uh, available traces that do different things. I, when I was learning ftrace, I did this once, once. And I thought, never again. What would a sysadmin do when you're doing something like this? Uh, I don't know if you saw Ben Rockwood's uh, talk this morning. We'd automate it. We'd come up with a shell script for this, because I'm not typing that in twice. And so that's exactly what I did. So my, my ftrace tools, I put them on GitHub. They're just shell scripts that make use of the existing kernel capabilities. So I don't need to install any kernel binary modules or anything like that. So func trace, TCP retransmit, SKB, it's just a shell script that does that, just so that I don't have to type that in. And of course, uh, being a nice sysadmin, I've created uh, man pages and example files to help document and communicate it in the Unix style. So ftrace does have many other capabilities, like um, buffer tracing or live tracing, uh, filters, for conditional tracing, so I can say, so, so some events may be too frequent just to emit out of the synchronous trace buffer, so I may do an in-kernel filter and say I'm only interested in this scheduler event if these flags are set. Uh, I can do stack traces on events, function triggers to enable disable tracing, uh, so I can say based on this event, enable tracing for these other events, uh, and I can also pick out arguments with, say, dynamic kernel function tracing. There's a whole heap of things you can do, and all of it is like this sort of stuff, where you're echoing things to various files. And I use it once and then forget. So for me, having a front-end tool has been critical. There's also perf events, which is part of the Linux source as well. Use it via the perf command, and it's a powerful multi-tool and profiler. Perf events has kind of been developed as the main profiler for Linux, and one that's, that multiple people can use at the same time. 
it, it creates a perf.data file, uh, which it, it's this typical uh, enable, dump to a file, and then post process. It's also uh, an advantage of perf events is there's been a lot of engineering effort into the uh, of reducing the overhead of moving the data from the kernel to user space, and so it has dynamic buffering. And uh, if I need to, if I need to capture a very high rate of events, I will switch from ftrace to perf events. Uh, since they both use the same trace points and k probes and u probes, you if if you're doing something in ftrace and you think, well, I'm just pushing ftrace too hard. I need a different way of doing this. You can then go to perf events and usually do the same thing. Uh, to give you an idea of, the, here I'm using uh, perf events to do the same thing I did earlier, where I'm tracing block RQ insert, and then it creates a perf.data file, and then I run perf script and it gives me the same output. So two commands, more keystrokes. I would rather just do t point space block block RQ insert and have it emit the output straight away. Uh, but there are cases where I need to do this if, if the output is just too frequent and the overhead is too high. I've created a web page of lots and lots of perf events one liners. Uh, perf events is great. It, it's ftrace for many distributions is there by default, so you already have it, and you can just start using the tools. With perf events, you generally do need to add the perf command, which is in one of the Linux tools common packages. But once you do, you can. I often use perf events. What perf events can do that ftrace can't is uh, the uh, CPU statistics. So like cycles, instructions, cache references, uh, using the CPU performance counters. Uh, to do instrumentation. And I could, I could count them using perf stat. I could record them using perf record, which lets me do things like grab the, the call stack or stack trace. So I may want to know which application code paths are causing last level cache load misses. And I can do that with perf record. Um, and I can also, you can also do uh, dynamic, instrument, uh, dynamic tracing with perf events. So here I've got a perf prime tcp send message the return, or tcp send message, and then size, and then go dereference this socket member because I want to see the state as well. It's, it's a really powerful tool, uh, but it is, and it's by default framework is certainly easier to use than ftrace's by default framework, which is all the sys files. Um, we do have that, that interface, but it's usually multiple steps to get the output you want. So perf record, write to a file, then perf, one of the, like perf report or perf script to process that data file. The last technology I want to mention is eBPF, and that's extended BPF. It is it does high performance filtering, does JIT for instrumentation, and it provides in kernel summaries, maps, so that we do things uh, like what Dtrace would do a lot, which is the aggregations, so that you can come up with a custom, efficient summary in kernel before you put the data out to user space. Uh, in, in this example here, uh, which is created by the author, we've got the uh, we've got a heat map on its side, so you can see a band of low latency cache hits and high latency device I/O, and it's a multi-mode. So pretty cool stuff. EPPF, it's gradually being included on Linux, and if you look at the Linux kernel mailing list, you'll see uh, posts about it. It's been very difficult to program directly, so it's something that you'd need a front-end tool for, like ftrace or perf events or system tab, which I'm sure will follow once the, the back-end engine has been integrated. Uh, and then there's lots of other traces as well. So system tap, system tap is... Uh, SystemTap can do many things. It, I would describe it as the most powerful of the traces. It can do uh, bounded loops. It can do kernel line tracing, so it can perf events. Uh, it, it can do custom in kernel statistics, which are like dtrace aggregations. So it can do many, many. It can also hook into user level probes. It can do many, many things. I've had issues in the past with stability, uh, but if you if you're careful to always run the, the latest version of SystemTap, like actually get the source code and build it. You'll find uh, you'll have a more pleasant experience because there are there are fewer bugs, and of course the bugs with System Tab aren't necessarily System Tab's fault. It's going into areas of the kernel that it may be tickling that uh, that you don't normally use, and so it's just exposing you to, to things that are already there. Uh, we don't use it. So at the moment uh, at Netflix, we I'm using ftrace and perf events a lot, and we'll use System Tab for some more exotic things like uh, getting into Java to do uh, USDT tracing. KTAP is another tracer. Uh, KTAP is pretty interesting. It was designed for embedded devices. It uh, also feels quite a lot like Dtrace when you use it. Its progress on KTAP stalled several months ago when uh, eBPF looked like it would be integrated into the Linux kernel, and the KTAP engineer needed to 
hook into uh, eBPF. So KTAP is kind of, its, it's progress has kind of been stalled, but it was very promising. If KTAP gets resuscitated and uh, becomes a front end onto eBPF, that would be pretty awesome, and we'll see what happens there. There's LTT and G, the Linux Trace Toolkit Next Gen. That's designed as a really high performance uh, trace to a log file, and then you post-process it using other tools, Tracer. And so it tries to aim to, to do that function very, very well and to be uh, very high performance. There are two Dtrace ports. So there is the uh, Dtrace for Linux port by Paul Fox, which has had uh, slow but, but somewhat steady progress, although he works on other projects as well. So it's mostly one developer. Uh, it's fairly far from being complete. And uh, I've used it in the lab environment sometimes. It's, it's fairly unstable. It's impressive how much he's got uh, ported. Oracle has also been doing a Dtrace port to uh, its Oracle Enterprise Linux. Um, and their progress has been uh, pretty steady. They're focusing on the test suite. It still getting, looks like it will be a long time before they have it complete, but uh, their pool was interesting. And then there's Cystic, which is a new tracer, which is a, uh, so far has been about doing user-level post-processing in Lua of say, the system called Interface. i would summarize them like this. So uh, F-Trace is, is fairly well developed. It's not, uh, it doesn't have a high ease of use until you add uh, tools. It doesn't have a huge set of capabilities, but it's fairly reasonable. It can, it can solve a lot of things. Uh, the Dtrace for Linux ports and KTAP, they're pretty similar, except they need much more development time. And so the last section is tools. So uh, I went through the background of how we got here and then the frameworks and then the tools that we build on top of it. So the backend instrumentation is the trace points, K probes, and U probes, tracing frameworks, F trace perf events, and then the front end tools. For F trace, there is trace CMD by Stephen Rustat. Has anyone used that trace CMD? So nobody. Oh no, one person. It's it seems pretty cool. It's a way of uh, so you, like my tools, you're not going around the uh, slash sys interface and echoing things directly. It is a multi tool. So, uh, uh, whereas with perf, uh, my collection of perf tools, I'm able to create more specific tools. So I've created things like IOSnoop and ExactSnoop that use ftrace. For perf events, perf events has the perf command, which is how perf events is commonly used. Uh, and then I've got some extra perf tools for it. For eBPF, it's still evolving. Uh, eBPF will be fronted by, uh, will likely be fronted by ftrace, per, uh, perf events, system tap, and hopefully ktap. So it will have many different options. I want to make the distinction between multi-tools and single-purpose tools. So multi-tools, perf and trace CMD are multi-tools. And so you run it with options and you can access any of the trace points or dyna dynamic tracing. Uh, and I've run, I've created some multi-tools as well. My perf tools t-point command, which can access the trace points, well, there's a thousand trace points. And so it, it has many different uses. I would say that the audience for multi-tools is fairly narrow. It's for engineers and developers who can take the time to learn them. For many of us, the multi-tools are more useful via canned one-liners. So if I gave you a set of one-liners for T-Point or Perf Events, that's what you're more likely to stick to. Some people will uh, go and develop their own with the multi-tools. Then there's single-purpose tools, which are similar to the canned one-liners, like ISNOOP, XXNOOP, and Byte Size. And these have a wide audience. This is for system administrators and everyone. And also, the Unix philosophy of doing one thing and doing it well. I've got a co collection of these, uh, which I've called uh, Perf Tools and put on GitHub. And these mostly sit on Ftrace. There's some that sit on Perf Events. Uh, like I said, this is after using Ftrace directly, I quickly realized that I should just shell script this to automate it. And that's exa exactly what these are. So these are fairly simple scripts. Each tool has the tool, a man page, an examples file, and a symlink under, under bin so you can set it up in a path. And so I, 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 it's really helpful when I'm developing these to write the man page and to write an examples file to, to give you examples of what they do. And so in my perf tools directory, so, so func trace, and then I go through different examples of, of why you'd use it. Uh, not just uh, 
say, the, the main page for the tool. So you get the main page of the tool, standard synopsis, description, options. Um, I have a, a section in all the main pages to explain overhead, uh, which I'm, I'm getting much better at than I used to in the past with Dtrace. Now I'm just documenting it as much as I can to help set expectations. Uh, but also a, a big believer in creating the examples page. The, the point of an examples file is where I just show you the output and, and talk about why it's interesting and why it's useful. It's just a text file that, it, that goes through various demonstrations. Uh, one of the reasons I believe in it is that if I create a tool and I struggle writing the main page or the examples file, I realize the tool might be a bad idea. It might be a good idea to ditch the tool. My perf tools are unsupported hacks, and so these may not work on all the kernel versions without tweaking them. Uh, one of the most useful things they do is they show you what can be done, not necessarily that it will work straight away. Once you know it can be done, it, that can be the most valuable part, because then uh, going from a broken tool to a working tool may, may only be like a few characters change. But if you don't know it can be done at all, then you don't start that process. So they can be useful simply to show what can be done with a bit of effort. They may have higher overhead than expected uh, just because of the ways I'm using ftrace. If it's a real problem, you can use, say, perf events, or you can rewrite them in C to use the buffer tracing approach, a dynamic buffer tracing approach. They're also, I, I, my perf tools, in some ways, are temporary implementations. Uh, depends on the perf tool, but uh, they will improve over time as Linux adds more features and I can rip out workarounds. So, uh, Usually they work. Sometimes you might need to mount debugfs. Uh, I've got a list of tools, but these are all on the GitHub page. So some of these actually come from the Dtrace toolkit, like iosnoop, execsnoop, opensnoop, and so on. Uh, this is a list of single purpose tools. So they just do one thing and do it well, Unix style. And then multi-purpose tools include things like tpoint for the trace points. Uh, I've got kprobe, which is for dynamically tracing kernel functions. And then these funk ones use the uh, ftrace function uh, different interfaces, which are fairly interesting. Funk counts, I can count function calls, funk trace, funk slower, so I can look for functions slower than a particular threshold. Uh, to give an idea of where they fit, this is where the single purpose tools and the multi tools go. I can actually add my, uh, say, some of the trace point groups there as well. So I don't have. I have a reasonable start with these uh, front-end interfaces onto ftrace, and I'll be adding more over, more over time. So just to see some of them work live. So something simple like, uh, here's exact snoop. Uh, I didn't want to connect to a, a production server and, and uh, suffer the latency because the, not because I didn't want to run the tools, but because the Wi-Fi is, has, I needed it to be reliable, so I just created a simple workload on my laptop uh, in VirtualBox. And you, by running exit snoop, you can see what the workload is doing. I'm just doing DD and then sleep for one second. Uh, Open snoop, another ftrace based perf tool, and I can see these are all the files that uh, DD is opening. These also have switches, so maybe I want to uh, include the time as well. And so, so if I need timestamps for some reason as part of the output. IO snoop will show disk IO and the latency is on the right, it's, although it's kind of verbose. So, so uh, latency in milliseconds, uh, the command that was issuing it, mostly it's DD, but I've got some asynchronous writes happening from the uh, kernel worker thread. Um, it's showing the block address and size in bytes. IO latency is doing a uh, aggregation and, and doing a histogram so that you can see the latencies without it scrolling up the screen. So I've got a, for this particular second, I had, most of my I was four to eight milliseconds. Uh, some of them were getting as slow as 32 to 64 milliseconds, so some level of queuing. Um, some of them were quite fast. So, that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, so I went through some of this. Oh, function graph, function graph is pretty cool. So function graph. So function count, I'll start with. Function count actually uses a uh, kernel uh, interface so that this is doing this, the counts in kernel level and only emitting the count numbers to user space. 
So I'm not, behind the scenes, I'm not dumping every event and then uh, uh, summarizing it. Ftrace uh, has the function profile, which already has a lot of capabilities like this, which is pretty cool. So I can see that uh, every second we were doing a, uh, 300 or more VFS reads and writes and so on. I can say func graph. Let's say func graph of... So all of these tools have nice usage. Let's do VFS, VFS write. And this could be quite verbose, so I'll just pick off a thousand lines. There we go. So func graph begins at a point and then goes deep into, uh, it, it walks the, ch the child functions and shows you uh, what, where things are actually going, and also prints out a microseconds latency. This is just a, a, one of the many awesome function profilers that Stephen Rustat just added to the kernel and hasn't really been marketed and, and uh, people don't know that this exists. But it's actually great for exploring the kernel and understanding how things work. It's very verbose. But it's great for exploring the kernel and understanding how things work. If I'm on a modern enough kernel, I can also do max depth. I forget if I'm on. If I do, oh, no, this is great. So here I've said max depth 5, so it only goes 5 levels deep. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, and then there's kprobe, which uh, I didn't demo. kprobe lets me do kernel dynamic tracing. So I may say, uh, do this open, uh, take the register SI and cast it as a string. Only if, and call it file name, but only if it ends in stat and then print it out. And so this is using another, uh, kprobe has been in the Linux kernel for, for a long time. I'm accessing it via the ftrace interface. And so kprobe itself is just a shell script that, that lets, that makes it easy for me to do this without having to type in a whole bunch of echo slash sys whatever. Uh, but it's excellent for exploring deep into the kernel and uh, pulling out more information. So to, to summarize some of this stuff, the T.1 liners, and I've demoed some of them earlier, with the trace points, they do print out format streams. And so I just wanted to include in the presentation how you, how you figure out what that format stream means. And so uh, this one, this is block RQ insert, and it's got a whole heap of fields here. It's in the kernel source code, and so you can pull up, uh, in this case it was block.h, and you can see how that string is created. That header file also has block comments to explain the, uh, the, the purpose of these probes. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking, what, I have to go read the kernel source code? This is better than nothing, because before I found this, this location, there was nothing. Uh, I think one of us needs to go to the Linux Perf Events wiki and create a page of trace point documentation and just like write the docs for every trace. I know I need to do that, someone needs to do that um, so that we don't have to keep digging into the kernel code. You can actually use T point minus V as reminders and it will tell you a bunch of stuff. So um, this is also, ftrace already gives this functionality for us. So I can do T point minus V block RQ issue and it says this is actually the, the fields that I have available and this is how I'm going to construct the format string. So I can just do t point minus v as a reminder at user level so that I don't have to go pull up the kernel source code. And sometimes that's sufficient. All of these fields can be used in the filter. So that's where, let's, let's say I wanted to only trace reads. So there's this thing called RWBS, which is the flags for the I.O. Um, that's showing where that came from. Funk count is really cool because that uses a different interface where I can trace uh, activity. And so oh, TCP as well. Funk count. So here's a, so TCP, all, all the TCP functions that are happening every second. This is, like I said, it's not as high overhead as you might expect because I'm using the function profiler. Uh, and I, if I see something that looks interesting, I could go straight to kprobe. And so here I've said kprobe minus s of TCP urgent. Uh, minus s will print the stack trace. And so here's TCP urgent, and here's the stack trace of how we got there. Why are we calling TCP urgent? Oh, okay. We're in TCP v4 do receive, out of IP receive, and so on. All of these functions I can trace as well. If I want to see their arguments, it is a bit nasty because I do have to mess around with registers, but the important part is it can be done. 
And so KPro one-liners, uh, so I might be using, I might use funk, I, so my workflow often involves using T-point for the static trace points or using one of the CAM tools like OpenSnoop or IOSnoop or IO latency. Uh, and then I might get into an area of the kernel, use funk count just to understand the rate that that function is being called because I don't want to instrument things that are too frequent. And then uh, K-probe to get more information out. And of course you can do filtering and uh, attach to a particular process ID. Uh, I do mention in the slides the internals of these tools. If you ever read the source code for the perf tools I've been publishing, they're designed to be stable and have fewest dependencies, but they are short temporary programs. Um, and they may be rewritten and improved when more features are added. Uh, they do on a SIG pipe, so you can do pi pipe head minus 100, and um, you can also use minus D duration to reduce overhead as well. Uh, in order of preference, I start with bash, orc, and then we'll pick, say, Perl 5, Python. So bash and orc is awesome, like we were told this morning as well, except for when orc isn't awesome. And so if you ever actually do read the source code to these scripts, which are pretty short, you'll see there's some weird code in there for... So when I say short, so kprobe is like 255 lines, tpoint is 222 lines. So um, inside, so most of this is just option logic. And uh, wow, that one doesn't even use awk. So I won't use awk if I don't have to. Ah, so this, this is iosnoop, and so uh, we end up going into uh, awk and then getting awk to process the output and, and uh, print it out. And so so in, you'll see some code in here that tries to select which version of awk to use and sometimes it gets a bit weird uh, because uh, it depends whether, depends whether you have gawk, mock, or awk installed and, and whether, it's, whether it honors F flush. Um, and I did a lot of performance work to make sure that you're always running the most efficient version. There's much more work to do. I've got more scripts to port. Uh, from my, my earlier work with Dtrace. And the last thing I want to mention is there are visual tools as well, apart from the command line tools I just demoed. So uh, things like uh, kernel shark, trace compass, flame graphs, and heat maps. These sit on top of the, the trace, tracing frameworks as well. And I've just got screenshots so you can see what they're like. Kernel shark does the F trace. It's, kernel shark was also written by Stephen Rustat. And it sits on top of F trace, and you can do things like this is looking at wake up latency and preemption latency, has a visualization for time series. Trace Compass is used by the LTT and G crowd. Uh, you can also consume other trace formats, something similar, so I can uh, bring in a detailed capture file and step through it. My flame graphs are awesome for visualizing stack traces, and so that's doing a perf event CPU flame graph. And uh, of course, you can do heat maps as well if you want to look at distributions over time and I published some code for turning perf events output into heat maps. So visualization, vi visual tools are uh, interesting as well, but mostly I was covering the, uh, the one-liners as a way to show what Linux can do with ftrace and perf events, and all of the, the existing frameworks that are there. So trace points, k-probes, u-probes, and that's my talk. <laughs>